One of the other reasons why you contacted me is because I guess you've been watching some of my content and when we did our interview, you know, a couple of things you kept mentioning was, man, you're going deep and stuff like that. But you know, that was your first time interacting with me. Yes. Um, but now you've kind of seen some of the interviews and you see how, you know, people are allowed to kind of express themselves and talk about some of the trauma that they've been through. Um, and so we had started talking about some of your stuff, uh, but you didn't want to go too deep and you know, I didn't press because- I do now, because I feel like it's, it's necessary to go deep, you know what I mean? So what was it exactly that you wanted to express? Okay, so first and foremost, um, was it because you got pregnant with me at a young age and you just didn't want to have children? But I, in order to find if, closure- If that is the case, yes. what would be your response to that? Um, to which question? To that if she said, well, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I was young and I just didn't want to have kids. What's up, YouTube? Guys, if you ever need to reach out to me, follow me on IG at at Marcus the Interviewer. Now back to the content. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews. Out here with the update. Hey. So, <laughs> guys, y'all may or may not remember her, but we interviewed her about four or so months back. And, um, and so, you know, um, basically you had a breast reduction surgery. Yes. And it had, I guess, kind of put you into a, a state of depression and other stuff. Yes. Um, and so you ended up homeless yes. um, because you stopped working and everything else due to that mental stuff you was going through. Um, so how are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so basically you contacted me because you have an update. You got, I yes. guess, your spot. Um, yeah. So I'm actually getting my new place um, tomorrow. I get my keys. So, yes, I left the shelter. I graduated a program. So I went through their program and now... I am moving into my own spot tomorrow. So I'm very proud of that. All I right. Very, very hard. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love Thank when so people progress through their situations and end up, you know, end up better on the other side. So, all right. All right. So, so yeah, I mean, so that's definitely a good thing. Um, you know, one of the other reasons why you contacted me is because I guess you've been watching some of my content. And when we did our interview, you know, a couple of things you kept mentioning was, man, you're going deep and stuff like that. But, you know, that was your first time interacting with me. Yes. Um, but now you've kind of seen some of the interviews and you see how, you know, people are allowed to kind of express themselves and talk about some of the trauma that they've been through. Um, and so we had started talking about some of your stuff. Uh, but you didn't want to go too deep and you know, I didn't press because I do now because I feel like it's, it's necessary to go deep. You know what I mean? So what was it exactly that you wanted to express? Okay. So first and foremost, um, so I was diagnosed with chronic PSTD and reoccurring depression. And I realized that like being at this program and at the shelter that it's not necessarily PSTD. Yes, I did undergo surgery, but I guess being diagnosed, I guess that was like the impact of having to go under the knife. It triggered something that was already there. Yes. Is what you're basically so saying. my real issues is really a lot with my mother and that's what I had to come to terms with and deal with. So I am doing better with my So kids. let's, so let's, so let's right. talk about that. So, okay. So you say that your issues are with your mom. So let's just recap real quick. So where are you from again? I am from Pennsylvania, but I am Haitian, and my father is Cuban, so, you know, Haitian and Shout Cuban. out to my Zoe. Hey, Shout out to all my Cubans, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right, so growing up in Pennsylvania, did you have both mom and dad in the household? I did not have both mom and dad in the Who'd household. Who'd you grow up with? I grew up with my... Well, my story is a little bit different. So when I was born, my grandma took care of me. And then when I came to the United States, I was living with my father. At what age was that? I guess from like one through maybe six. Okay. And then my mom came to the United States. Okay. And, and so, then I was living with her for a little while. And then I started living with my grandma permanently. Cause at she, what age permanently? What age permanently? I would say eight. But then I moved back with my mom when I was like... 13 up until 19. Okay, and so you was going to say that you had moved back with your grandma because of what? So, when I moved, when, okay, so when I was living with my father, my mom came to the United States and she said that she wanted to take custody of me. So she took me to New York and my dad, he wasn't having that. So they, they kind of fought for me to come back, but I guess 
that that has its own problems but me i was staying with my grandmother and i was staying with my mom and my dad he was trying to get custody to me he got the social workers involved and everything because you know he just didn't feel like you know the well, i mean well, i get all that but the bottom line is it, it sounds like it was a custody battle custody right battle, yeah. and so I'm, I'm trying to figure out where the trauma started as far as with your mom okay so where the trauma started is that like i guess um maybe i thought she was gonna be there for me by moving with her but she well yeah that's what i was trying off. to ask so so that's what i was trying to ask right so you said in between six and eight you live with your mom and then at eight in between eight and 13 you went and live with your grandma yes why why did you not stay she with your mom left. in between eight and 13 she left where we don't know where she went. She just left and she just kept doing this back and forth thing up until now. So wait, she just like left, like yeah, left just town, left. just dipped out? Yeah. Wow, where at eight years that? old? Yeah. Huh. How did that make you feel? As a child, like you're unloved, like your parent doesn't love you. And you know, like. Your, your grandma, is that her mom or your dad's mom? That's my mom's mom. So, did she ever give you an explanation as to why your mom dipped out? Um, not really. My grandma just was taking care of me. She was the main provider at the time, but not really, no. But yeah. I did live in a house with my other, well, my mom's siblings right. and whatnot, so. Okay, so your mom was like the oldest? No, my mom is actually, so my grandma had nine kids, so my mom is actually the seventh child okay okay yeah. i get it but she just left so we're the wrong time and she went to florida but i don't know how accurate or how true that was but we don't know where she went and i feel like maybe my grandma didn't tell me at the time because she was trying to protect me i was eight so you think she was kind of like just i guess into street activities and stuff like that i okay. don't know what she was doing i really don't know so you still don't know to this day no um so okay so let's talk about that so <laughs> At 13 and 19, you went back to live with her. Yeah. So she obviously came back in into play and into your life. And so how was that time in between 13 and 19? That was hard because um, I didn't really like living with her because I didn't got attached to my grandmother, my grandma being there and helping me. Right. And you saw her more as mom than anything yeah, else. And so. so she's been there since I was born. But um, I really didn't like living with her. Um, I mean, did anything happen or anything like that? She just was working a lot, and I had to babysit my sister, but we just never got along. Like, it just was always some type of, like, tension and bad energy and verbally abuse and, you know, her not being there for me. Because I used to play basketball, and I always had this vision that she would come to my basketball games, but was never there, so. How'd that make you feel? Terrible. I could have been in a WNBA by now, but you know, um, I'm doing other things. But I look back at it and I figured like if I would have had that strong support system, maybe from my my mother, and she was there, I probably wouldn't went far. Cause I started playing when I was like six, and my grandma encouraged me. She was there for me. She paid for a lot of the a lot of stuff all the leagues and all the stuff you got to do but with this uniforms. woman came to my practice one time and was just looking at me all weird and then left and i never never showed up to any games no practice no nothing so and so what about your dad what what level of involvement did he have in your life my dad was involved beginning stages and then he stopped being involved and we now are rekindling our relationship. Um, I was brainwashed and I was told that he just was a deadbeat dad and he was a nobody and he had all these kids and all these things that my mother told me about him and that side of the family. So come to find out these things are not even true. My mom had me on child support. I didn't even know about it. My dad told me about it one time when I had asked him for money. And I guess he was so upset, and he was like, well, do you know that I asked your mom, she has money, I give her child support every single month. This was like, I was like 17 or 18. And I had no idea that 
that she was, was getting child yeah, support. Yeah, I had for no you. clue. And so you didn't have any contact with him throughout those years up until about seventeen. I feel like my dad, he did try to contact me. We, I'm asking, did y'all have contact? Yes, Not we did. What did it, we did. Uh, was it attempted? Uh, yes, we did have contact. Okay, okay. All right, um, I'm going to ask, right, just because I don't remember if I asked last time, but did anything ever happen to you when you was younger? I was physically abused by her, so... By um, your mom? Yeah. How so? I guess you would call that punishment when I would do something in school. And I was bad because I heard that I have like a behavior problem. So she used to whip me. You have a behavior problem? That's what I was told from her and those family members that I had some type of behavior problem. I was a child. Like I'm six and eight. Like what do I know about a behavior problem? You know well, I mean, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm it doesn't seem like you have that in you. <laughs> but you never know. You know what I'm saying? People can definitely turn on the switch. Well, what is a behavior problem? Well, that's At what I'm saying. Six and eight, you're like running around and like. So, so this is when child. you were younger. This isn't when you was like a teenager or anything no, like that. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. But when I okay. was younger, yeah. Um, I used to get beat a lot for doing bad well, things, I guess. Well, I don't know. Bad things is going outside and. Wanting to play and eat ice cream I get it. I get it. Just kind of being a kid. But she just took it a little overboard. And a social kind of old school parenting type of deal. Yeah. And you said a social worker what? Was kind of like involved and everything. So a lot of verbal abuse and physical abuse from that. Hmm. Okay. 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 So what's y'all's relationship like today? So right now, um, we don't speak. I'm working on my mental health, kind of working on myself. When was the last time y'all spoke? When was the last time we spoke? Is it summer? Last September or August? this September? Okay. No, it's I'm a, saying it's, like it's, I'm trying oh, to yeah. recollect the time. It's September. So, we, so about a no, month and August. change ago? We spoke, I would say May. May? Yeah. About four months ago. Yeah. So it's always an argument when I talk to her. Argue about what? What are y'all arguing about? I, I be asking her questions, like, you know, like... Because I want to know where I come from, you know? I know, like, my... I want to know, like, my ancestry. Like, what would they like? Because I'm still trying to figure myself out and why I do certain things. Well, I mean, but and you know your mom's mom. And she was really what, mad. What, 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 else would they, what else were you looking for? You know your mom's mom, think, you know your dad. I think some answers. It's like, you know, why... Why are you this type of way? Why are you this way towards me? And come to find out, my father always loved my mother. So I always thought in the back of my mind, well, maybe it's because she treats me a certain way because, because of their relationship. Right. But I found out that he's he's really a great dad. Like, I really got to know my dad, who he is. He's a great man. And come to find out, he always loved her. And he wanted that family, you know, uh, that family vibe unit, with right. me, unit, stuff yeah. like that. But I guess she wasn't with it, but... How old was she when she had you? She had me at 16. Okay, so she was a teenage parent. Okay, okay, okay. Shout okay. out to my dad, by the way. He's great. He's awesome. Shout and so how old... How, is your dad older than your mom? Yeah, he is. How much? Probably about like five. Five years or so? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, no. Actually... Maybe three, sorry, three years. Three years? Yeah. Okay, it okay. It was back then, I guess. <laughs> long, long and short of it, though, is that um, they're pretty much around the same age. And so, so you feel like a lot of this trauma that you're experiencing comes from the relationship with your mom? I believe so. So, I'm trying to get over that. And, you know, I'm halfway there because... I mean, what are you doing it to, to heal that? Well, the program that I was in... Um, the shelter, they kind of, um, that's what they do. They help you with your childhood trauma. So they help me process a lot of that childhood trauma. They gave me some skills, um, some coping skills, you know, how to kind of like deal with your parents, how to deal with the world. So they helped me out a lot. And I think that's where my growth came, my growth has come from. Because not having that parent there not only that but them having to treat you a certain way well, i was about to say not having them there is one thing and then it's a whole nother thing to have them there 
and they kind of treat you like crap. You know yes, what I'm saying? And, so, and, they, and they call you all types of, you know, bad names and stuff in their language and, you know, very abusive and don't even properly, don't even really want you to have a normal childhood. So I, I'm, I guess before, yes, I was very successful. I was working for corporate and stuff like that, but then I hit rock bottom going through this surgery or whatever. And the whole time I was thinking like, yeah, I'm gonna get over this. I'm gonna get through this because it's just PSTD from having surgery, surgery but and it's not, yeah. it's childhood trauma. So I'm overcoming that now. Because I know where the root of my issues come from. And you say you haven't talked to him about four or five months? No. So, I mean, you know, one of the things that we do on this channel is we have conversations with people when they're not necessarily right here in front of us. Um, you know, so that we can express how we feel, get out of everything. Um, I know you haven't talked to him in a few months. So, you know, you've been going through this healing and everything else. Um, I mean, if there is anything that you could tell her or ask her, uh, what would you say? I just want to know why have you treated me the way that you've treated me? Because um, you don't treat my sister this way. You only treat me this way, you know. How many it's, years difference is you and your sister? So we're like five. Five years? Yeah. Okay, so. And we don't have the same dad, so. But she doesn't treat my sister that way. My sister Why is Why do you think that is? You, I, I don't know. I've been, that's what I want to know. Like, why? Do you treat me this way? Do I remind you of something? Is it because it didn't work out with my father? Because my father treated you real nice. Like, it ain't like he ain't treat you like shit. Did you, it was because you got pregnant with me at a young age and you just didn't want to have children. But I, in order to find if, closure. If that is the case. Yes. What would be your response to that? Um, to which question? To that if she said, well, yeah, I mean. To be honest with you, I was young and I just didn't want to have kids. I think I would be okay with that answer because I'm learning to live for myself anyways. I would be okay with it, but I would be like, well, would there be any chance that we could rekindle our relationship? What do you think her response when she sees this video is going to be? <laughs> I actually don't know. She's probably going to be like, this girl, she's just, she's too much. <laughs> But I want her to see this because I want her to see that, like, this is not normal, you know? This is not normal at all. And it's not normal in the black community. So I feel like we're brainwashed because of slavery and we think that a lot of things are normal and it's not normal. That's not normal at all. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, a mother's love is definitely something that all humans crave. And so when you're lacking that, it almost certainly guarantees that there's going to be trauma oh my and all type of mental things you're going to be dealing yes. with. Um, because that stuff, once it seeps in, man, it's hard to unroot it and really kind of heal from it. So, huh, I tell you what. But well, I'm listen, doing it. I'm I was working, about to I'm say. It out. It's not easy. And um, it's not easy. It really isn't because not having. And then my grandmother died. She died um, in 2015. So that's that was also, like your real support system. Yeah. So that's also impacted her and it impacted me. But I got to let go because that's, that's just not right. Do you, you love your mom? Yeah. Do you think she loves you? Honestly, I don't know because I've learned what real love is. And if you love someone, why do you treat them that way? Especially your child, especially the child that you gave birth to. Yep. It's very rare that you hear that a mother does not want their child unless they're on drugs. Well, I tell you, I'm about to say we we hear it often enough on this channel, unfortunately. Okay, yeah. yeah, but unfortunately, usually they're on drugs. It, it's or right, or, or just have different mental issues or stuff like that. Yeah, not just completely just choosing to be. But we have seen it. We've definitely seen it. So, <sighs> I tell you what. All right. Well, listen. Um, you still, let me tell you, definitely congrats on your new Thank spot. You. you have any furniture and all that stuff? And, all, you know, how are you? Are you working right now? Like, what's the deal? At the moment, I'm not working. I'm currently working on my mental issues right now. So you're still working yourself out mentally? All right. Well, hey, listen, I mean, if anybody out there did want to reach out, help, or donate, 
Um, do you have any way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? Yes, so my cash app is Beyonce Lover 28. <laughs> Beyonce yeah, Lover. I'm gonna be happy. Hey, hey, girl. <laughs> okay, anyways, Beyonce Lover what? Uh, 28. 28, okay. So please donate. Um, but what I want to say though is that, like, to the channel, is thank you so much because the first video I saw a lot of encouraging words and that uplifted me. I saw a lot of people saying, you know, she got a good head on her shoulders. So that really meant a lot to me. And I just want to say that y'all are beautiful and you can overcome anything. Um, I'm overcoming this and I'm determined to overcome this because I feel like God is going to use me one day to help other people. I feel like he's doing it now, but I feel like my story will help other women, you know. But thank you so much for all the encouraging words. I love y'all so much. Hey, well, listen, we appreciate you. Definitely wish you nothing but the best <laughs> out here, you. all right? Thank you. Make sure you have a good one, sweetie. Hey. All right.